afternoon, everyone, out in social media world. Today. I'm going to take off my mask. We've been socially distanced and um, remove my mask so you can understand me better. Uh, my name is Margaret Abe Koga. I'm the mayor for the city of Mount View, and I'm joined here this afternoon with my uh, vice mayor, Ellen May, and uh, former mayor and council member Chris Clark. And today being June 1st is the start of Pride Month. And uh, we've had a tradition in Mountain View, I want to say since um, council member Clark joined the council in 2012, um, of raising the flag, the Pride flag, here at City Hall. And normally we would do this uh, before a regular city council meeting, but as we are meeting by Zoom and unable to meet physically, uh, we wanted to have this special moment to, um, to raise the flag and, and to signify the start of Pride Month. I think it's especially um, significant in, the, in these times with the, the incidents that have been happening in the nation, um, where, and we share in the, the sorrow and the anger um, of the injustices of, of um, certain um, groups of, of folks in our community that we've um, experienced and um, it's really a time for us to come together and um, reaffirm our commitment to a diverse and accepting and uh, understanding community and I'm very proud that Mountain View has been that way I believe um, and we've reaffirmed our commitment um, more recently with uh, the city council making uh, creating a community for all as one of our goals as a council. And so um, this is very important to all of us here. And so we just wanted to take a moment um, for time for reflection and uh, also to, to mark this moment. So um, I wanted to invite Vice Mayor Kamei to say a few words um, and then talk to Mayor Clark. So we're going to switch the switch here. Hi, my name is Ellen Kamei and I'm the Vice Mayor of the City of Mountain View. I'm happy to celebrate Pride Month with all of you as we celebrate the City of Mountain View's inclusivity and that it's a welcoming place for everybody. The City is committed to share our shared humanity and I'm excited that we'll be raising the Pride flag today. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Chris Clark, a council member here in the City of Mountain View. And I just wanted to start by thanking my colleagues for their commitment to, um, to um, creating a, a more inclusive community. And as part of that, um, when I first joined, I think seven years ago in 2013 was the first year we had the opportunity to raise the Pride flag in Mountain View. And, and my colleagues have now allowed that to continue on an annual basis. So even after I'm gone and no longer pestering you, you'll, you'll <laughs> the, the flag will still fly each year, hopefully. Um, and I just wanted to, um, conclude by saying over the years as we've raised the flag we've done so in many different um, uh, societal and economic conditions um, and there have been really really high points um, from the, the month uh, that happened to be every pride month when uh, the Supreme Court decision came down allowing gay marriage and we had the, the White House um, lit up in rainbow colors that was one of the highlights of a really awesome year um, and we've also raised the flag um, in the face of tragedy um, right after the Orlando massacre a few years ago, and um, and I just want to acknowledge this year that while we while we celebrate inclusivity and are are proud um, of, of and this is meant to be a celebratory month, um, also recognizing that the uh, the, the um, gay rights movement, especially in the 20th, 20th century, was started by an uprising, Stonewall, that we celebrated the anniversary of last year, and so I just want to end by recognizing. The, the uprisings that are occurring today and that um, you know our brothers and sisters who are fighting for a more inclusive and equitable society. And so while this is generally a celebratory month, hopefully we can all take this moment to think about um, becoming a more um, unified community um, as the pride flag most uh, certainly represents. So uh, with that, um, I'll welcome back the mayor for a proclamation and we'll raise the flag. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor and Council Member Clark. Uh, we issue a proclamation every June as well with the flag raising, so I'd like to read the proclamation. 
Whereas Mountain View celebrates the history and diversity of our city's lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer LGBTQ community and promotes a society in which all residents can live free from discrimination. And whereas the city of Mountain View is proud to prohibit city employment discrimination based on sexual orientation and is proud to provide our employees with domestic partner benefits. And whereas the observance of LGBTQ Pride Month in June offers each of us a chance to reaffirm our commitment to promoting understanding and communication in our community, and whereas flying the rainbow flag at City Hall throughout the month of June further symbolizes the city's celebration of diversity and support for the LGBTQ community. And now, therefore, I, Margaret Abikoga, Mayor of the City of Mountain View, along with my colleagues on the City Council, do hereby proclaim the month of June as LGBTQ Pride Month and encourage all residents of Mountain View to celebrate the rich diversity of our community, signed and sealed this first day of June 2020. And I am going to um, leave it for our Council Member Clark um, to signify and hopefully socially <laughs> distanced. <laughs> so, um, and then with that, I'd like to ask him if you would do the honors and raise the flag. Yep. Uh, Councilmember Davis will provide an invocation. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, normally, we proclaim June to be Pride Month in our first meeting of the month, and um, I, I almost always have an invocation appropriate to that. It is normally meant to be a celebration, um, but that doesn't seem very appropriate at this time. So Gabrielle Antalovich, who is the president of the board at the Billy DeFrank LGBTQ Plus Center, in our city and in my district, um, help me write an invocation for today. This is a difficult and complicated Pride Month. The fight for justice for George Floyd is a reminder that Pride did not start as a celebration as we know it today. It started at the Stonewall Inn in New York in 1969 after years of police brutality against the LGBTQ plus community and culminated into weeks of rioting that ignited protests and riots globally. LGBTQ plus African American and Latinx people are harassed, violated, neglected, and brutalized the most. The highest murder and suicide rate are transgender folks, especially transgender women of color globally. The Billy D. Frank LGBTQ plus community center in my district has been working closely with our police chief, Eddie Garcia, to mend the relationship by having the police academy come to the Billy DeFrank Center to listen to a panel of LGBTQ plus people to talk about who they are. And the chief has formed an LGBTQ plus committee working with the chief to adapt <laughs> internal procedures to keep LGBTQ plus officers and residents safe from harassment. On top of this, we are in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic globally. Pride after pride celebrations across countries have been canceled. And here we are today with a virtual acknowledgement of June as National Pride Month at the San Jose City Council. We'll actually be formally declaring it next week. The LGBTQ plus community in San Jose is active and celebrates with us today, looking back at the achievements made over time. High-tech gays at the Billy DeFrank Center in the 1980s and 90s successfully sued the federal government to stop discrimination regarding security clearances in large tech and manufacturing companies. Today, most of these companies have active LGBTQ plus employee groups. Silicon Valley Pride has grown into one of our largest city events at Plaza de Cesar Chavez Park. Our Children's Discovery Museum has an annual Proud of Our Family Day to celebrate LGBTQ plus families 
and participated in last year's World AIDS Day at their facility. There was also the World AIDS um, Quilt and Vigil was held at City Hall. The Santa Clara County Office of LGBTQ Office of Affairs has spawned new services such as the Gender Clinic, LGBTQ plus homeless shelter, and training for county services to be more LGBTQ plus welcoming. And as you may know, my office supported the Billy DeFranks Center's South Bay, South Bay Trans Day of Visibility event at the Rotunda this year. That event was held online. Um, we, we celebrated it in the Rotunda last year. The event was held online this year. So while we are mourning the tragedies in our country, it's, it's important to remember how much we do still have to celebrate and how far we have come in some areas. And I think that helps us provide hope that we will make that progress in other areas as well. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Hi, I'm Naya Rivera and you're watching Outlook Video. Sarah Fernando is the organizer for the Black Trans Lives Matter rally. So Sarah, why did you want to do that? To amplify the black trans and queer voices in our community, uh, to bring awareness to the violence and brutality that happens with the black trans communities around the world, and to make sure that when we talk about black lives, we mean all black lives, including trans and including queer black lives. So why did you want to have it at the Billy DeFrank Center rather than downtown at City Hall? Well, first off, I did not want to dilute the message of Black Lives Matter. I wanted to make sure that if we are going to mobilize, that we are able to educate, inform, and bring people into our space. And uh, we reach out to them to let them know that they're more than um, included. They're invited to share the space that we have. Um, and, and they are here. They are here. Oh. That's amazing. And the thing is that we want them here. We want to make sure that we elevate the names out there of folks, trans black folks that get brutalized, that are victim to violence, that are that get assaulted under police brutality. There are all so many things uh, when it comes to intersectional identities that we need to be aware of and we need to uplift. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> We need to make sure that we uplift all black lives, all black trans lives, all queer black lives, all black lives. Say his name, Tony McDay. Say his name. Tony McDay. Say her name, Iona Dior. Say her name. Iona Dior. Say her name, Nina Bob. Black trans lives matter. For too long, pride has been devoted and mostly gay white males. But back in 2014, Thaddeus Campbell came and changed that. He said, no, we need to reach out to all of our community. We need to reach out to those marginalized groups that are underrepresented. And that's what he did. And he has transformed pride into what it is today. We are still learning. We are still growing. We stand with Black Lives Matter. We stand with Black Trans Lives Matter. We are here for you. You make us better. We will continue to fight and be loud and be proud. They will not silence us and they will not erase our trans siblings of color. We must advance an agenda of abolition, but that means more than defunding the police, which is why our struggle for abolition means a total societal transformation. Our abolitionist society. Our abolitionist society is one that values and protects black trans lives, and I want you to realize these truths. Universal single-payer health care is a trans rights issue. 
when so many cannot afford medications, need for transitioning, and face medical discrimination over subpar care. Quality, safe, social housing is a trans rights issue. When so many cannot rely on family members or economic stability. Ethnic studies and fully funded schools are a trans rights issue. This is an epic moment, an epic moment that we have to transform the dialogue, the discussion that's happening in this country. This is not about reform. This is not about a little bit of defunding of the police. It's about radical transformation of the way that we do. The way that we do policing in our communities. And if you, anyone thinks that this is, this is too big an order, just think, first of all, there are, there are communities in our country that have made a big start. It's not completed yet, but they've made a big start and they've proven that, that, that this kind of community police, tra taking apart the existing police department and building a com community policing system. Camden, New Jersey. Now Camden, New Jersey, admittedly, it's a, it's a small city, about 75,000 people, but it used to have the highest murder rate in the country. After disbanding the police department and instituting community policing, they brought that, that crime rate way down. This, this is the success that can happen if we transform our police department and our society. I challenge you to witness the struggles and creations of black and trans experience. Repeat after me, black lives matter. Black lives matter. Black trans lives matter. Black trans lives matter. Black art matters. Black art matters. In the ball scene and in my black trans family. I learned that space is made sacred, that movement is sacred technology, which determines reality, that the impact of movement is as fierce as those willing to pass it on. I'm a former Lorraine from the House of Lorraine, an all-American house, mixed heritage, and from my siblings, from my former mother, I learned especially that we are agents of this reality. The art may not always serve us, and sometimes it begins to serve others. Our language, our customs, our clothing, our technology is created by trans people of indigenous heritage. Don't deny it, be proud of it. Repeat after me, I am proud of my heritage. I am proud of my heritage. We are proud of our heritage. We are proud of our heritage. Last year, over 60 people in Mexico were murdered for being trans. Last year, over 160 people were murdered in Brazil for being trans. This can no longer happen. Brown lives needs to be protected as well. We must protect all Latinx lives because we to make we need to ensure that we protect all trans lives. Monday, Monday was a good day for us. Monday, we heard the Supreme Court of the United States call out a decision that protected all of our workplace rights, no matter whether where we fell in the spectrum, LGBTQ+. It was a good day. I cried, I wept. Transgender no, people cannot serve in the military and the water rises. Trans youth in our schools cannot use restrooms or gyms that identify, that reflect their identity and the water rises behind that dam. Trans athletes, trans youth athletes cannot compete, they cannot take the field of competition in this country. Another course, and, and the, the water rises. 
over and over and over again. And Friday, Friday, what did we hear? What did we get from our administration? A new ruling for the Affordable Care Act. Thank you so fucking much. Black trans lives matter. Black trans lives matter. We love to get mail from you. Email us at comments at outlookvideo.org. To contact us by phone, call 408-293-3040, extension 205. Visit our website at outlookvideo.org. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash outlookvideo. And connect with us at facebook.com slash outlookvideo. So, what is interesting is that there is some weird good news, and that is <laughs> the Supreme Court actually ruled that it is illegal now to discriminate against LGBTQs in the workplace. And that is fabulous news and something to be really happy about because, you know, I personally really suffered through that in the 1970s. And what's interesting about that is that when you don't get to work when you're in your 20s, you know, I was a young pup, I didn't learn um, a lot of skills in the workplace. So I became a late bloomer about those things. And so even now, I feel as if I'm 10 years younger than other people of my age uh, when it comes to dealing with the workplace. So it does impact you a great deal when you can't work because of who you are. So this is great news. However, and I am going to consult notes here because I want to get it right. There's still critical gaps in our federal non-discrimination laws. It is still legal for federally funded entities, including hospitals, colleges, and adoption agencies, to discriminate against LGBTQ pluses. It is also legal for stores, restaurants, and hotels to discriminate against LGBTQs in certain circumstances. And on top of that, laws and policies are so scattered um, that the federal, state, and local legislators that in one circumstance you can and in another circumstance you can't be discriminated against. And that is, you know, not healthy for companies who are in several states. A lot of companies are all over the country. So in one state, they can discriminate against you, and in another state, they can't. And can you imagine the HR people going bonkers around that? So there's still a lot of work to be done around this and you know sometimes i wonder why why do we have such scattered legislation around discrimination i think it's one of the ways to you know make sure that um they can still get you you know <laughs> it, it is difficult we are very blessed to be in california we are even more blessed to be in Santa Clara County because our legislators are very protective of minorities, including LGBTQ pluses. And, you know, it's, it's interesting how, you know, why do we cluster in California? Well, it's because um, we are less discriminated against. So, you know, even though it's more expensive, it's actually worth um, some of the expense to be here and be yourself. And so, you know, I really understand so many organizations 
uh, actually are attorneys that sued the government, sued different organizations um, because of discriminatory practices. And so we have to support these uh, organizations that do the suing. And, you know, it's so sad that Amy, whose um, case came to, um, to the Supreme Court, that she died um, before seeing that we won. <laughs> Woohoo! Um, with big butts. And. Um, so anyway, it, it, it's an interesting time, a time to celebrate some things and a time to reflect about what's going on, to see how any of us can be part of this. You know, what part can I play in supporting the Black Lives Matter movement? Um, what part can I play in being more inclusive of everyone in our community. I'm really blessed that I'm with the Billy DeFrank LGBTQ plus community center because it contains the work, you know, because these issues are huge. They really are. And where do you start? And I'm really lucky mine is contained at the community center and we are discussing as a board of directors, we are volunteer run, we don't have employees. So as a board of directors, we're constantly talking about how can we expand our ability to make people welcome. And that really is the message that we had when Stonewall happened, you know, welcome your LGBTQs into your life, and we are saying, welcome your black and brown people, your African-American and Latinx people into your life. And